Hello everyone, welcome to one new episode of Golan Cafe. Today we are going to go through Advent of Code Day 6. Uh, for who doesn't know what Advent of Code is, it's a, um, it's a series of puzzles uh, that go through uh, each Christmas from uh, the 1st of December up until the 25th of December. Uh, so each day you have a different puzzle with uh, increasing difficulty. And uh, here we go, Day 6 Advent of Code. Today uh, it's actually rather um, uh, rather easy uh, problem and we're going to use a set uh, for counting uh, the unique um, number of uh, questions that have been asked uh, in a in a input puzzle that we see here. Uh, so the old story here is that we have uh, a um, we have a, a puzzle input and the puzzle input is uh, representing a list of uh, questions uh, being asked uh, to people uh, in an airplane. So here we go from the uh, from the actual story. The form uh, asks a series of 26 yes or no questions marked A through Z all you need to do is identify the questions for which anyone in your group answer yes. Since your group is just you, this doesn't take very long. However, the person sitting next to you seems to be experiencing a language barrier and asks if you can help. Uh, for each of the people in their group, you write down the questions uh, for which they answer yes, one per line, for example. And here you have a, you have a list of, uh, of people replying, uh, answering, different, uh, answering dis different questions. So you can see for each line is, is a different person here and they answer yes to a different set of questions. So they all answer yes to A, B, C, uh, but so when it comes to the last question, they answer yes to the first person, say yes to X, the first or second person to Y, and the third person to Z. So, and here it explains uh, what I just said. Another group asks for your help, so um, eventually you have collected answers from every group on the plane, which is the puzzle input that we're going to process today. Each group's answers are separated by a blank line and uh, each group, each person's answers are on, are on a single line, for example. Um, here you can see here that uh, you have a one, uh, then you have two group, uh, three groups, uh, four and five groups, finally. So we have five groups. Uh, the first group is just one person and the person replies yes to three questions. The second group is three people and each of them replies yes to one different question. The second group is just two people, as you can see, and so on and so forth. And here it just goes through the, the explanation. So basically you have five groups and each group um, represents a, a person answering a specific question. And uh, then what it asks is basically not counting uh, the total number of questions that everyone uh, answered to. So here you have three questions, uh, A, B, C. Uh, the second group you have also three questions being answered by all people. Uh, here you also have three questions in total because even though we have A being answered twice, this doesn't get counted twice. It's just uh, the, the, the type of questions. So we kind of have to um, uh, distinctively count the number of questions that have been uh, answered by each group. So for each group we just need to count the unique uh, number of questions that have been answered in that group. And uh, in the fourth group, even though you have uh, four different people, uh, the total number of questions is just one because uh, that's just a, the answer to the question A. And same for the last group, which is B, it's one. And the, the final, um, and the final, uh, the final uh, objective for this problem is to go through each group, um, then count for each group all the questions that have been asked, uh, that have been answered uh, by the people, and uh, and then count them and add them up all together. And here we can see that uh, here we have uh, three questions being answered in total, then plus three, which is the second group, plus three, which is the third group, uh, plus one and plus one, and the total is 11. So now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna get our puzzle input, and our puzzle input is going to be our um, input for this, uh, for this exercise, and we're gonna do like uh, the other problems that we have uh, See in previous days, we're going to create an input.txt which uh, contains our puzzle input. We are going to create a one.go, which is a uh, which is a file that contain that uh, contains our solution for the first problem. And the first thing that we're going to do is uh, use IO util as always uh, to read the file contents. Uh, so we read our input uh, input.txt, and we also need to take care of the error uh, that we see here. So we do log.fatal, log.fatal, fatal, 
error. So now, um, in terms of uh, attempting to solve this problem, um, what we're gonna what we're gonna use is a set, uh, or more specifically, a mapping Go because Go doesn't have sets um, in the standard library. So we're just gonna use a map, and we are gonna go each group, and then for each group, we are gonna stick all the questions into a map, and then that map is gonna count the unique uh, number of uh, questions that we get, the total number of questions that we get uh in a unique way so we don't get duplicate questions in the map in the map entries and that is going to be our count for each group uh, so then at each iteration at each group we just reset the map and uh, we add the result to a counter and then we return the counter and that's going to be our uh, our total so the first thing i just want to create a counter which is going to be the final result then uh, we are going to go through um, we are going to go through each group uh, and we use a byte of split as we have done in previous episodes as well which uh, is going to split our byte stream um, based on what we specify on the second argument so we just say that we want uh, a empty line so for each empty line we split our byte stream and that will allow us to split uh, the byte stream into five different chunks in this case but in our problem set is going to be much more so once we have uh, the group, uh, what we need to do, we need to go through each line. So each line represents for us, uh, uh, each line represents for us uh, the, uh, the person answering a different set of questions. So we go through each line and we do the same thing, byte or split. Uh, this time, uh, instead of uh, using uh, um, uh, a new line, an empty line, we're going to use just a, a single empty line which means that uh, a single new line uh, character which means that uh, for example the second group um, we are gonna split uh, for each empty line here so it's the first uh, empty line is, is first uh, new line and second new line so you have in total uh, three different uh, uh, you have in total three different uh, lines uh, in this example here so first we split by new line, second uh, by empty line, secondly we split by new line, and finally here we have each line uh, lined up. We said that for each group we need to reset our uh, our set, our map that counts the questions. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have a map uh, that maps uh, runes uh, to empty structs. So I'm gonna explain in a second. The rune is a single character in Go, it's a unicode point in Go and it's a very effective way for us to uh, represent a single character. We could have used a string but for this case it's much more efficient to just use a rune because it's what we automatically get when we iterate over a string in Go. And then the st empty struct it just means that uh, the contents of the map, uh, in this case uh, we have a key that is a character and this, the value associated with the character we don't really care about so it's uh, the map in this case is just a, a set uh, for us since uh, we said in go we don't have any way to represent a set natively in the standard library or we don't have any type on that then we this is uh, like a very easy trick uh, to represent a set in go so we have a set of questions then now we have a line so the line uh, now we need to go through each character of the line and we need to uh, finally add this character into our set. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we can just do range over the string uh, and over the line effectively and uh, the question then we're gonna add the character into the question and we're just gonna add an empty struct. Empty struct is just a way in Go for uh, uh, specifying uh, a value that is uh, zero size. So it's not used, it's a value that is not used and is a very efficient way for us uh, to uh, you know a memory efficient way for us to uh, create a set in this case so once uh, we went through all the characters in the line once we went all through all the uh, lines in the group then what we do we just are going to uh, increment our counter we say okay in this group I've I found uh, um, uh, this number of characters which is uh, represented by the number of uh, keys in the map as you can see here and uh, this is going to be added to our total counter. So this is what uh, we are going to get. Uh, so now line 11, let's see what uh, the issue is with line 11. We just need to do also range here, range over by slice. And uh, we also need to import uh, all our, uh, all our um, dependencies, all our packages. And then we run, uh, go run, one dot go. 
Uh, we also need to print the output, obviously, because otherwise we will not be able to know what's the output. And we run 1.go. And this is the output 6782, which is what we were expecting here. So we're just basically using a set and counting for each group the unique uh, occurrences of the questions that we get. Uh, and that's pretty much what uh, the questions uh, was asking here. That was pretty straightforward also compared to previous episodes and to previous problems. Um, part two is uh, very, very similar to the first part. Uh, the thing is that you don't need to identify the questions which anyone answered yes. So you need to identify the question to which everyone answered yes. So the sub the difference is that uh, now, um, here we go with the same example and it says uh, in the first group everyone, which is all one person, answered yes to three questions. So the first count is three questions. In the second group there is no question to which everyone answered yes. As you see there is no common. So it's to find the common answer to which everyone uh, answered yes. So for each group, for each line and for each group, we need to go through each line and we need to find out uh, which question uh, appears uh, in each line of that group. So here with the one person case, which is kind of an edge case, but still uh, with the one person case, uh, all the questions that appear in that, in that specific line, they are going to be counted. In the second example, we have three people. Uh, although we have three people, uh, there is no one single question that gets repeated as, across the three lines, so the count is zero. The second, the third group here, uh, we have two people and uh, the, the question that appears in all of the lines, in all of the people, is the question A, so it's just one, it counts as one. And same goes for the fourth group, so you have four people and the question that appears in all the four people is just one, is A. And uh, so it's going to be three, zero, one, 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 and the total is going to be six. So we need to slightly, uh, um, we need to change slightly the structure of our program, but uh, not too much. Um, so cp one dot go to uh, two dot go, which is the second part. So what we need to change is um, instead of counting all the questions in our map, we need to count uh, the questions that the number of questions that appear on. Uh, that appear on um, for each uh, person, uh, for each group. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to change our map. Uh, we want to count how many occurrences of that word that we have seen, of that questions we have seen. So here we just increment uh, for each line. And then once we increment it for each line, what we're going to do, we're going to range over the questions and um, and then uh, we are going to see if uh, the count of that, uh, of that question is equal to the count of uh, how many people we have in the, in the line. So here we can actually change the name of this, which is uh, line. We can change to people. So this is people. So we range over people. Uh, people. So actually this is person. Um, person and uh, this is person as well so person here so for each person at the end of the of the end of the result uh, this is the length of the group not people uh, that's why i was getting confused because it's uh, people is like the representation of the group you could say this is, this is people here or you can call it group so this is person this is person as well person, this is person. Then what we get at the end here is uh, we want to count basically uh, our set is going to contain, uh, so for example for the second group, like for example third group which is the easier to understand, the third group the question set is going to contain A and the value is going to be 2 because A compares two times in our set then we have B and the value of that set of the map is going to be 1 a C and the value of the C is going to be 1 so we will want to find if we want to go through, through our map so this time is a map it's not a set and we're going to go through each uh, uh, question that we get each entry on our map and when we see that the entry has a count uh, equal to the number of people in the group that means that that uh, question has been uh, found uh, in each line and so we can just use the counter uh, to, uh, 
to increment our total. So in here, uh, we just do total plus plus, and that's uh, just going to uh, that just going to uh, gives us the the result that we were expecting here. Actually, the number yes, so that's uh, that's exactly total plus plus because uh, this is going to be called uh, each time we find a character that is present in all the lines on our group. And uh, I think that's all. That's that's the result we were expecting, basically. So in this case, we are not using a set anymore. We're using a map. And the reason why we're using a map is because for each character, we just don't have to count all the characters that we see. We just also need to count the, how many occurrences each character has in each group. And also bear in mind that we are on a group level. Everything is done on a group level. So if you are confused about uh, why we are doing this, it's uh, just think of like removing these first two lines and think that this is uh, what happens for each group. So here you see here, so our two uh, for loops, uh, that's what happens in our group level here. So with our for loop, we just go through each line. Uh, we For each character, we increment, we count on many occurrences, and then at the end of the of the loop, uh, we check uh, which characters occurred at least uh, n times, where n is the number of lines that we have in our group. And that's basically uh, what happens, uh, and how you, can, uh, how you can count the number of characters that everyone uh, has answered yes to. So now we uh, go run to the go, and the result is zero. The result is zero because Let's see why it's zero. So this is zero here, and question that C is plus plus. Um, so zero plus plus is one. Range over questions, and this is a key value. So this is the count. This is actual count, and then in group, uh, the length of the group uh, is going to be. Uh, the thing is that uh, we need to, um, the length of the group is not correct in this way because this just counts the number of bytes, so we need to count the number of uh, lines. And how do we count the number of lines? Is bytes of split group and bytes and then unite your line. And that I think should do what we need to do. Then Line 23, uh, length of bytes to split group byte of uh, just new line, actually. And uh, let's see here. 3596, and uh, this was, uh, was the actual uh, result. So that's uh, that's uh, Admiral Code Day Six. Hope you liked it. This, today's episode was quite uh, you know quite brief, uh, straightforward. Uh, just using sets. Hopefully, uh, Day Seven is going to be much more challenging. And uh, hope uh, you see you the next one. Thanks for watching.